Hi, thanks for joining us at Google Cloud Next. Today we'll go through how Google Cloud optimizes infrastructure for your unique workload. I'm Chelsea Chop, product manager for AI, ML, and HPC on Google Cloud. And I'm joined by Ruin Hess, a group product manager of storage. And you'll hear from him in a little bit. Today, we have two main topics. We'll go through announcements in Compute Engine as well as storage. So let's dive in to talk through more on Compute Engine. A few years ago, we introduced VM families. And they were created to be optimized for all specific workloads. So let's do a quick refresher of each family. Starting on the left with general purpose, we have cost optimized or efficient VMs, or E2. They provide up to a 31% cost savings compared to our original N1 machines. They provide reliable performance across Intel and AMD, and they can be provisioned with custom machine types or CMTs to only pay for what you need. Going one to the right, we have balanced or N2 and N2D providing a balance between customization, performance, and TCO. They provide the widest feature set and can also be put provisioned with custom machine types. A quick little reminder for you, the N2D denotes AMD and N2 is Intel-based. Moving another one to the right, we have the newest family, and that is Tau VMs. And they were introduced last year and provide the best performance per dollar and are optimized for scale-out workloads. When we introduced Tau VMs last year, it was on the third generation AMD Epic Milan processor. And earlier this year, we launched T2A, our first ARM instance. And we'll dive into more on T2A in a minute. Now for workload optimized, starting on the right, we have Compute Optimized, which provides the highest performance consistency CPUs on Compute Engine. And this is best suited for your high-end web and app serving, gaming, or even your HPC workloads. And I'm really excited to announce one of our first third generation VMs with you, C3. Moving one over, we have Memory Optimized, which provides the most memory on Compute Engine and is best suited for your largest databases, such as SAP HANA or Windows databases. And to round out our workload optimized fleet, we have accelerator optimized VMs with high end performance GPUs based on NVIDIA Ampere A100 Tensor Core GPUs. We'll also get to another exciting announcement in our A2 VMs as well. Now let's dive into our recent launches. Starting on the left with general purpose, we have Tau VMs. Earlier this year, we announced the addition of the Tau family with ARM-based VMs, and they're now generally available in Google Cloud, extending that rich choices that we already have to offer with Intel and AMD. You can now use these VMs in select regions in North America, Europe, and Asia. And these VMs support key Google products like Google Kubernetes Engine. In addition, there's support for a broad ecosystem of operating systems, databases, programming languages, and so many other tools as well. Next up in our Compute Optimized VM family, we're excited to introduce C3, our newest machine series powered by fourth generation Intel Xeon scalable processors, or codenamed Sapphire Rapids. C3 is more than just another CPU update. This is the first VM built on our next generation platform architecture, powered by Google Cloud's custom Intel Infrastructure Processing Unit, or an IPU. This IPU is the outcome of a deep multi-year collaboration between Google Cloud and Intel. C3 also features new 200 gigabytes low latency networking, as well as high performance IO products, Cloud Hyperdisk, which you'll soon hear more from Ruin about. Contact your sales team to join in on our private preview. Because our clusters can be scaled and parallelized more densely, we're seeing customers and partners like Ansys, Snapchat, and ParallelWorks completing jobs must fa much faster and also boosting their productivity. Snapchat, or Snap, was able to obtain a 20% increase in performance over C2 for a key workload. ParallelWorks does vital development towards building a weather-ready nation, including NOAA's multi-cloud R&D computing environment, they were able to achieve a 10x faster results running Warp on C3. And Ansys, a leader in engineering simulation, was able to see a 3x performance gain on C3 over C2, running their flagship mechanical products, 
including ANSYS Fluent, ANSYS Mechanical, and LS Dyna, due to the higher memory bandwidth and lower network latency that you get with C3. So let's move on to Accelerator Optimize. In our Accelerator Optimize VM portfolio, it's a VM that is optimized to run the NVIDIA A100 GPUs. We're really excited to announce today the A2 Ultra GPU VM instance, which is based on the NVIDIA A100 80 gigabyte GPU. This is best suited for largest models with massive data tables like deep learning recommendation models. Uh, the A180 gigabyte reaches up to 1.3 terabytes of unified memory per node and delivers up to a 3x throughput increase over the original A140 gigabyte. For HPC applications with largest data sets, the A180 gigabytes additional memory was able to deliver up to a 2x in throughput increase with Quantum Espresso, a materials simulation. On a big data analytics benchmark, A180 gigabytes delivered insights with a, to a 2x increase over the A140 gigabyte. This makes it ideally suited for your merging workloads with exploding data sets. And we hear from our customers and users all the time that their AI demands purpose-built infrastructure for them to be successful. AI Singapore is a national program in AI supported by their National Research Foundation and hosted by the National University of Singapore. They were able to reduce a large language model processing time by 40% and also gain a 50% increase on text generation throughput over the A2 mega GPU shapes based off the original A140 gigabyte. This allowed their teams to experiment faster with increased productivity. And I'm also just excited to share that Neuro is looking forward to experimenting with our purpose-built hardware for their platform. Now, I'll hand it off to Ruin to talk about new announcements in storage. Thanks so much, Chelsea. Happy to be here. Over the years, we've launched a lot of performance and feature improvements to Persistent Disk. And while we're happy we're, with where we're going with Persistent Disk, we've also taken the time to step back and think a bit about what does block storage on the cloud really ideally look like? From customer conversations, three areas quickly crystallized. Ideally, block storage should be dynamically provisioned, tuned to specific performance and capa capacity needs, and decoupled from instance type and size. Customers should be able to dynamically change performance when requirements change. Also, block storage should be full spectrum, meaning that it should cover all the core cloud workloads, and that for each workload, it should cover the entire spectrum without efficiency or TCO cliffs. And then finally, block storage ideally should be managed at scale with aggregate storage management, including capacity pooling, and with policy-based management. And ideally, with workload awareness, allowing you to set performance requirements to the, in the workloads context rather than tactically at the disk level. Following these insights, we set out to build Google's next generation block storage, and we're now introducing Google Cloud Hyperdisk. Hyperdisk is built to leverage our new IPU-based architecture. It offloads and dynamically scales out storage processing. And by decoupling block storage from the VM, Hyperdisk allows you to tune easily and dynamically the storage to your workload, achieving higher performance, higher flexibility, and higher efficiency. To bring all these capabilities to you, Google Cloud Hyperdisk is an entirely new portfolio. Hyperdisk Balanced is our new general purpose volume type, the best fit for most workloads. It covers a broad range of workloads, offering up to 150,000 IOPS and 2.4 gigabytes a second of throughput. It's joined on the high end by Hyperdisk Extreme, our new premium SKU focusing on the highest performance databases with explicit performance SLAs and up to 320,000 IOPS. For cost-sensitive, throughput-oriented workloads, we have Hyperdisk Throughput. With up to 3 gigabytes a second and also performance and capacity provisioning separately. So all of these SKUs have capacity and performance provisioned separately and dynamically, performance decoupled from instance types, and up to 512 terabytes in capacity. All of them will be available for Compute Engine and GKE. And all of them will also be available in hyperdisk storage pools, where you can manage at scale with thin provisioning, data reduction, and policy-based management. Let's have a look at what this looks like with an actual case study. This is a case study of the steps at a high level that you might step through when planning a SQL Server instance. Today, constraints of how performance and capacity management works leads to a complicated balancing act when you try to meet the requirements of the workload. 
Capacity and performance sizing frequently takes weeks, and you need a detailed understanding of the workload to do this well. Finally, mistakes are costly and can require downtime to fix. Hyperdisk allows you to tune performance to the workload without instance restrictions. You can size capacity freely and have actual usage determine consumption without excessive planning and hot growth gymnastics. And performance can be changed at any time if requirements change. All of this leads to dramatic real-world impact. Simpler deployment and management, more efficient use of resources, and an ability to, to dynamically adjust to changing your requirements at any time. So key, three key aspects help you optimize TCO for storage intensive workloads with Hyperdisk. You'll be able to choose instance size based on workload needs, resulting in smaller instances. You'll be able to provision only the capacity and performance needed for workloads, resulting in less over-provisioning. And for workloads with predictable demand patterns, you can further optimize with dynamic provisioning. If, for example, your workload has a peak that's associated with end of quarter reporting, you can adjust it with dynamic provisioning for that period alone, and then scale back as needed. Overall, we estimate that for common storage intensive workloads, you'll see an average of 50% lower TCO with Hyperdisk. We're very excited about Hyperdisk and look forward to making it available in preview later this year. We have some great sessions for you at Next this, this year. Mod 103 covers the top 10 ways to lower your costs on Google Cloud. Mod 107 covers how to protect your infrastructure with a cloud environment built to tackle today's insecurity challenges. And Mod 300 is about leveraging AI infrastructure to optimize cost performance. From Chelsea and me, thank you for joining our session. We hope you enjoy the rest of Next.